Welcome to this remote control quick tip. In this quick tip, we're going to adjust the throttle spring on this little radio here. Now, this is a FlySky FSI6S. It's a little 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, and it also comes with a receiver and even a little stand at the front. So if you're flying using something that connects to an iPhone or you want to mount something like an FPV screen, you can do it onto here as well. So the really nice thing about this is the fact that it's less than 50 US dollars and that includes the radio and it also includes the receiver. So it's an option for those of you that are starting out. It doesn't have an awful lot of features, but sometimes having lots and lots of features can just be a little bit confusing and overwhelming. So this is a radio that we're actually going to use in our series where we're building an FPV quadcopter. In those videos, you can watch us actually go through each of the individual steps and we're putting a kit together. And the next video we're going to use is we're going to put the radio onto it, which is what this thing is here. We're going to use this radio in the series, but the big problem that we have is this stick over here is spring loaded. Now, I'm not sure why FlySky did this, because uh, normally in a Mode 2 radio, which is how I tend to fly, that's elevator, aileron, rudder and throttle and throttle should stay in the position that you leave it. The fact at the moment that it bounces up to the 50% position is at best annoying and at worst just bloody dangerous. So we are going to open the back of the radio to do this modification. Uh, hopefully FlySky will bring out other versions where they take care of this. I suppose it does mean that irrespective of how you set this up you can actually decide whether you want your throttle over here or your throttle over here, but we're going to set it up like all of our other radios and have it on here. Now this thing runs on four AA batteries. Now we're going to take those out so there's no power in the radio before we go mooching around. Uh, lying a radio down on its sticks always makes me a little bit nervous. We're going to put it down on something a bit softer. To get into the back of the radio what you have to do is just pry open these little rubber parts and all I'm just using here is a little flat bladed screwdriver and if you just keep having a go at it the little tabs will eventually let go and as you peel those back you'll notice that there are two screw holes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same on the other side and then I'm just going to take out the two screws that are in here and then we'll come back and have a look. So we've taken off those uh, rubber pieces and they just come out they're going to slide straight back in we've removed the four screws the four screws themselves are really tiny little things so a half decent Phillips will get those out for you now we've done that then again we're going to use our little flat bladed screwdriver as a persuader and we're just going to open the case very gently because there are a couple of wires in here that we're going to have to undo now it looks really really complicated in here but don't worry we're only going to play with this little bit up here i'd recommend that you remove the back part completely so i would pull this is the power cable that comes from the battery compartment so i would pull that one out i'd also disconnect this other little cable on here as well Okay, so there we go. That uh, gave up. That was a little bit stiffer than I wanted. Let's put that piece out of the way and now we can see the guts of the radio. Now this is the throttle over here and I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick this up. Hopefully it will. But you can see right there, get the light on it, there's like a little spring that's getting stretched. Now what we need to do is remove that spring completely because we don't need it anymore. Now we could just unhook it from the top and pull the whole thing off and that's um, potentially going to be the easiest way to do it but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unscrew the little Phillips that's on this very top piece here hopefully when the camera catches up you can kind of see that this little piece is where the top of the little spring is connected to so I'm just going to remove that and you have to be very gentle. This is a really, really long screw, so you're going to have to keep at it. Much longer than the ones at the back. And then very, very carefully, this is where some snipe nose pliers come in handy, just pull that top piece off. And then while you hold it, you can slide it 
off the top of the spring and then the spring itself will come out too so there we go the spring has gone now there is another piece here which is a rocker which is designed to push the uh, the piece back and if you can see it's kind of coming up out the back here the challenge is we've got to pull that piece out as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this cable out because what we're going to have to do is very gently lift this whole assembly up so we can slide that rocket out under, at the bottom uh, we don't necessarily have to do this but I think it's worthwhile us doing it just because that thing is just going to rattle around and make a ton of noise when we're actually using the piece. So, there we go. So, that's that little rocker piece that we no longer need. I'd put that somewhere safe, you never know, you might need it again. So, let's put everything back together. Do up those two little screws. Don't go mad, they're only into plastic, so just firm tightness plug the cable back in okay and now we have a throttle that stays where it's put but it is very very loose too loose in my opinion for most people to be able to cope with it now it the gimbal itself is actually designed you can see this bit here that has all these teeth on to have a bent piece over the top that applies a little bit of pressure that then keeps the throttle in the right position and there are also two little holes here for additional screws now normally on a gimbal you have a little piece of plastic or something across this piece that actually puts a little bit of pressure on this gimbal on the back to keep it in place now there's lots of different things you could use here and unfortunately nothing's provided in the kit from fly sky so what we're going to do is i'm going to find either a piece of plastic about that length uh, or even uh, if you cut a bit of an aluminium can up and fold it, you can screw it into this bit here. You just want something to apply uh, some pressure onto that ratcheted piece. So let me just stop that there. I'm going to find something to use and we'll come back and install it. So here's the radio with the fix in place. And what I did in this case, uh, because we have a 3D printer here, I just designed this little part which fits perfectly over the back. Now again, so long as some, you get something that's about five millimeters wide uh, and that long, if you can put two holes in it, so long as you can apply a little bit of tension over the back of that ratchet, then it will work fine. Now what I've done is I've put that design of that little thing on Thingiverse, so if you're interested in printing one, it should make your life a little bit easier. So here it is installed, so there, are two screws that I managed to find that fit the posts. Again, unfortunately, those aren't supplied in the kit. You've got to root around in the spares bin to find some. There is that little piece that's going over the back of the ratchet. And now that it's nice and stiff and it's staying in its position beautifully and I can move it to side to side without affecting the throttle. So that's all sorted. So to put it back together, it's just a reverse of how we've done it. So we're going to plug these two cables back in, pop the back on, pop those two screws in, and then push these pieces home. And then we should be in a position where we can actually use this radio for our quadcopter for beginners series. So again, this is a radio that's come from Banggood. So I need to say thank you to those guys for sending it to us. Um, I think there is a new version coming out if it's not out by the time you view this video. I'll see if we can get hold of a later one because in my opinion, having to do that to make a radio usable isn't great by any stretch. So join us for the next video in our quadcopter for beginners series where we're going to set this up, wire it into our model, configure everything with clean flight and then we can try and fly. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.